is chapter five season two good i'm gonna be going through my opinions on the current season but i'm also gonna be sprinkling in what i've seen and how the pros are playing the current season a lot of you guys ask me questions what's the best assault rifle should i run an smg what's the best shotgun should i be running the wings what are some of the tips and tricks i'm gonna combine all of my new season content into one video what are my thoughts on chapter five season two and how should you be playing it let's jump in First off, yes, I actually do like Chapter 5 Season 2. I think this season is going to be a very, very good one, especially for competitive. Yes, there are clearly some issues. Zeus's Lightning Bolt is ridiculous. I'll talk about that in a second, but it's not as big of a deal as what you think it is. But overall, I like this season. I love the diversity of loot pool, the fact that people are just debating endlessly about what's the best shotgun. Should I run this assault rifle? Should I run a DMR? Should I run this? The fact that we're having these debates about what's the best loadout proves why this season is so good. I'm sick of season after season. I can make a video telling you what is exactly the best loadout in every single situation and honestly you can't really debate it they are just the best weapons right now none of that there is so much diversity in how you can play the game what are the best ways to play which i'll talk about in a second and i think that's really fun the new medallions giving only one team a certain ability i think is super interesting is going to create some really cool storylines the map itself is fun i really really like the new changes to the map there are a bunch of annoying build grids like the new pois are just a nightmare to fight in when you can't build but keeps you on your toes keeps your box fighting a little bit fresh you can't just box up every single time the double dash ability from the underworld dash i think it's called i find super exciting i have no clue what an end game is going to look like through those pys but overall i like the season now, as for what I would change about the season and also how pros are currently playing the season, we got to kick off with Zeus's Lightning Bolt. This is obviously one of the main turning points of the season. This item is incredibly frustrating. I get it. It hits you through walls. You can throw it across the entire map. You almost have no clue someone's using it on you. Even if you somehow dodge their first Zeus's Lightning Bolt and survive, it's back up in eight seconds again. Yet whenever I try to use it, for some reason, I'm getting head snipe from Jimmy from 400 meters away. I get it. I feel your pain. Trust me. I do. As far as competitive goes, though, it doesn't look like it's going to be as problematic and competitive for two reasons. Firstly, yes, it is in tournaments, but firstly, you can only get it out of the new God Chest and from Zeus himself. So there's going to be way less of them in tournaments than what you're currently dealing with in ranked and pubs. Secondly, like I just touched on, if you try to use Zeus's Lightning Bolt, often you are getting beamed. Now, if you guys didn't see it, there is a new exploit with the Lightning Bolt where if you build a two by one box above you, you can use the Lightning Bolt, float up into the second build and then throw it through walls. Yes, I know you're thinking, Ozzy, why the hell are you revealing this? It's going to make my games that much worse. My hope is that it makes it so much worse that they vault it. I am not on team vault anything fun. You guys have to understand that now. I've changed a lot of my opinions over fun items in the game. But this lightning bolt needs to be balanced in some way. It's incredibly frustrating to verse right now. And I think most people would agree. So I'm hoping they balance it or at least do something to fix this because it's just absolutely absurd. They really need to do something about not letting it hit you through builds. But I understand if they do that, then it would probably make it completely useless as an item as well. And I don't want that. I think it can be a defining item of the season. They just need to balance it somehow. I think it needs to have a way longer cooldown. If I somehow dodge three lightning bolts from Zeus himself, I should should have more than eight seconds to recover and do something about it. I know you're thinking, Ozzy, just shoot them. And I agree. A lot of times people use the lightning bolt on me. I can just head snipe them or beam them and it's fine. Or when I try to use it in a dumb situation, someone else beams me, which is totally fair. But if you're versing good opponents on a dead side of map and they have high ground, sometimes you can't just shoot them. And I know it's frustrating to deal with. So I'm hoping they do something to balance it. Now, this is also creating the frustration because honestly, Zeus's Mythic is a pub item. It is an item for casuals to just throw lightning and feel cool and have fun i totally get that i have no problem with that this is where a lot of the frustration comes from from ranked having the same loot pool as pubs i think if zeus's lightning bolt was only in pubs and not in ranked it would not be causing this level of frustration and then obviously you could just take it out of tournaments as well i think epic will definitely do something to address this item before we get to fncs although if you've been watching any of the pro scrims where the zeus's lightning bolt hasn't been banned because some people have been banning it over on eu the pros are kind of using it in the early game to like just get some surge or get some easy elims around their py then they drop it most of them aren't carrying it into end game and yes it is absolutely absurd on high ground being able to just throw it down and kill people on low ground but carrying an item for the entire game 24 25 minutes just to throw it three times in end game honestly really isn't worth it with some of the other items in the game next up let's talk about mobility 
there is none. And I know what you're thinking, Ozzy, there is literally Icarus's wings you can fly around the whole map. I know, but if you've tried to use this at all around any player who has at least one thumb, you've seen what happens. You get absolutely deleted. Yes, Martos has come up with some crazy cool tricks you can do with this. And honestly, it's a really fun item again in pubs or maybe ranked, just moving around the map, not so bad. But in a competitive setting, if you try to use these wings, you are going to die. Do not pick them up ever. Maybe off spawn to kind of pick up some extra loot. But as soon as you're around any kind of player who can shoot you with guns, do not use the wings. Your only mobility right now is the flow berry. If you get a flow berry jar, that is one of the best things you can carry right now. You should be carrying that over everything. If you can get your hands on a few flow berries, you should honestly be carrying those as well. That's your only consistent form of mobility in this season outside of getting the underworld dash like I talked about. And that's going to move on to my next topic medallions what is the best drop on the map right now what is the best medallion it is without a doubt the underworld dash cerberus if you can get cerberus's medallion your chance of winning has gone up so much in solos and duos so much so that i think cerberus's underworld dash medallion is so good i would take it over the other three medallions combined again i know what you're thinking aussie that's crazy siphon with extra damage and extra sprint speed but hear me out especially in duos you can get three stacks of the double dash and then drop it to your teammate they can pick it up and then you both have the ability this makes every single end game rotate completely free not only that it's one of the easiest ways to take high ground off an opponent you can both double dash up pump them or just build on top of them you now have high ground for free I know obviously Ares medallion that does extra damage is cool, but it really only does one extra rarity of damage. If you have a green gun with Ares medallion, it's now a blue gun. It's not that crazy. And yes, Siphon is incredibly fun, but only having Siphon on one of the two players in your duo is not that strong. In solos, it could be cool and we are going to see some awesome clutches this season, but I just don't think that is enough to warrant taking it or trying to go for it over the Cerberus medallion. And then obviously Zeus's medallion sprint and jump higher with no fall damage is very cool. In solos you might see a lot of players take high ground with that and again it can save you in a pinch in even in duos but compared to the Cerberus medallion it is no comparison that is why Malabuka and Peterbot two of the best teams in the world on their respective regions are going for the Cerberus medallion it is by far the best if you want to win solo victory cup finals games you want to play aggressive you want to pick a drop where if you walk away from it your chance of winning is skyrocketing it is right now the underworld gate or whatever it's called wherever Cerberus is drop there now, let's talk about weapons. Let's kick off with shotgun, because this is a big one right now. What is the best shotgun? It is still the auto shotgun. I know that is painful to hear, but in almost every single scenario, the auto shotgun is best. If you're a casual player, you're not very good at the game, and you want to get more kills, the auto shotgun. If you are an S-tier competitive player, and you are playing in a duo cash cup or FNCS, and you want to get more kills, the auto shotgun. It's just the best shotgun in the game right now. Now, I know what you're thinking. You know, polarized clicks, all these Peterbot, they run the pump shotgun. I get it. The pump shotgun is still incredibly strong and if you have good piece control you can play very very well with it but the auto shotgun for some reason this season i swear it's hitting even harder it is just the best weapon for the skill if you have the best piece control and you are going to play flawlessly and you want to absolutely style on your opponent the pump shotgun is still solid but right now i think in most scenarios if you just want the straight up answer of what's the strongest shotgun it is the auto shotgun now i'm obviously leaving out the new shotgun the gatekeeper shotgun what do i think about it it's weirdly inconsistent. Like, I think it's the pellet spread. The fact that it shoots in a triangle, there's so many times where I feel like I've hit 100 damage. I've gone back and I've clipped it on my stream and I've hit like a 20 because the pellet spread is just really, really odd. Really does annoy me. And obviously it only has three shots. Now, if you're going to run Cerberus' shotgun, I feel like it has to have the extender mag, especially in duos. Three shots is just not enough in duos. Now, obviously, if you can, you know, claim the, the mid map, you can claim the weapon bunkers that spawn in third zone, you can then change the attachments and add a drum gun to it so maybe if you find one inside that vault that didn't already have it put the drum mag on it fair enough you could argue that's decent but i think unless it has a drum mag it is completely pointless and even if it does i still think the auto shotgun or the pump shotgun's better i don't know a lot of people are disagreeing with me here but you also have really really powerful smgs and assault rifles right now so if you're gonna go with the pump shotgun you can hit that big pump and have a really quick uh, sp uh switch damage weapon a lot of the times the tax shotgun when it's really strong in metas is because there's no good damage swap so you just want to hold your shotgun out and keep shooting but right now the auto shotgun does that job better or if you run the pump shotgun you still have a good swap damage anyway so i don't think the new shotgun is worth carrying personally i think you should still be sticking to the auto shotgun or if you're really really good at the game the pump shotgun can be better in some scenarios but end game it's still all auto shotgun
Now, as for AR, SMG, Sniper, DMR, this is where it gets totally interesting. And honestly, you can play how you want. The new Assault Rifle is really, really solid. It has high fire rate. It has good bleed damage, good structure damage. It has not a lot of recoil. It's a really, really solid gun. It's still not the best for Storm Surge, which is where I'm going to mention the DMR. And I know it sounds crazy. I am the biggest hater of the DMR. I have made so many jokes about how the DMR is a pointless weapon. It should never be in the game. But, and again, before you flame me in the comments, because every single gun now has bullet travel time, the DMR has a place in the meta, and I can't believe I'm saying that. So back in the day, when you shot a gun, no matter what range you're at, the bullet instantly hit. So it's so much easier to hit range damage. That is called hit scan. When assault rifles did this and the DMR didn't, it meant there was no point running the DMR. But now that all guns are hard to hit at range, the DMR makes sense if you're going for storm surge, because if you have the mythic one, it hits for like over 130 headshots. That is actually worth using for Storm Surge. If you're playing aggressive, if you're W keying, I don't think it's worth carrying at all. And even in Storm Surge lobbies, the problem is you are going to have no spray weapon unless you're running three guns, which if you're running three guns, I feel like you might as well just run a sniper rifle if you can find it, and then you can one-shot headshot. So again, it's up to you. You can play it how you want, but if you're going to try and run the DMR in a pump shotgun, you're going to have a lot of problems box fighting. You're going to have a lot of problems pressuring walls in endgames. The DMR is still a cool weapon for Surge, and maybe run it off spawn, but as soon as you find another gun on a refresh or maybe you are going to go for you know the the weapon bank bunkers then maybe you drop it and switch it up it's up to you again right now it is personal preference as for the smgs burst smg versus the new smg i actually think the new smg is stronger than the hyper smg it replaced but i still think the burst smg is better with the with the bleed damage with having the laser mag on it but again you can't always upgrade your weapons anymore so maybe that's where the new smg is better because at a base i think it's better without attachments but like i said earlier in the video that's why i love this loophole right now there is a lot of personal preference in what the rest of your loadout is are you gonna run smg shotgun sniper dmr shotgun smg it is actually up to you what you want to run right now and the pros are doing this i've watched so many scrims and tournaments now and they are all running a whole bunch of different loadouts. I'm sorry this video took longer than usual. I really wanted to dive in and figure out this season and my thoughts around it because it is a crazy season with so much to it. And I think it is going to be one of the more exciting seasons. There's still some things that can get balanced and I hope Epic's working on them, but I'm excited for a good season.